You've been hearing a lot about SQL Database in Fabric and how it's simple, autonomous and secure, and optimized for AI. But what are we doing to help you monitor performance? Learn all about it this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we're going to be continuing our discussion on SQL Database in Fabric, which is currently in public preview. And to do this, I'm bringing along Subojit, who is a product manager for SQL Database in Fabric. Subojit, thanks so much. This is not your first time on the show, but we're happy to have you back. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, it's great to be back here. And um... Hi, I'm Shubhojit. Just a small introduction for people who are seeing me here for the first time. I'm a product manager in Azure Data, and I'll be helping you answer some questions or solve some doubts on performance dashboard in Fabric SQL DB. Awesome. Great. It's great to have you back on the show. And for folks who aren't aware, SQL Database and Fabric is in public preview. It's something we've been working on uh, that really tries to make things more simple, more autonomous, more secure, uh, kind of by default. Uh, so I think, Subhoja, maybe a good primer for this topic is just when it comes to monitoring SQL database in Fabric, what are some of the options or like, is it hard? Like, what do people need to know? Yeah. A um, couple of things. So say you're using Fabric SQL database to have your data work, to store your data workload, and you suddenly find um, your database to be running slow or your queries to not run as fast as you expect. So you would want to go to Fabric SQL DB. You want to uh, see if there's something wrong. So the Fabric SQL DB performance dashboard would help you monitor and understand if there's something wrong with your database, would give you a very basic hint. Uh, it would show alerts if there's something ongoing or uh, retrospective alerts. Uh, you can see uh, the table size, count tables, can identify certain important queries, and even observe auto-indexing activity. So these are just certain insights about what's going to come next. Um, OK, first, starting with alerts. So just in case, if, if your database is not running as expected, and uh, um, on, on few occasions, on, on, on a few specific places, we tend to give alerts. The first example is blocking queries. If any of the queries uh, is blocking any other, then it triggers an alert. Second, if your CPU usage exceeds 80% of vCores uh, for five minutes or more, then we again throw an alert. And similarly for allocated size as well. I'll show a short demo to explain how things are. So say you're using uh, your Fabric SQL database here and you have so many uh, tables in your database and there's something wrong in the database, then you can see a message bar which states your Fabric SQL database performance is critical and needs your attention. So this is where um, there's a message bar for ongoing alert and you can see a small bell icon beside performance summary, which is for uh, any retrospective alert. So you can see that the CPU consumption is currently high and also there's a blocked query per second. Uh, you can see them in the other tiles as well in the performance summary. So yeah, this is the first basic thing that you can see just to understand that something is wrong. Cool, awesome. So without you know yeah. doing anything, configuring anything, I'm gonna start getting these alerts based on these categories you called out, which makes a lot of sense. Now, my next question is like, performance tuning is very difficult typical, typically, and you have to be a SQL expert. You have to know a good amount about how SQL works to be really good at it. So how does this performance dashboard compare and who is it kind of built for? Yeah, uh, performance tuning has been a really expert kind of an area, but in this case, we have tried to make it really simple. So instead of enabling or using a lot of knobs, we have made it really simple where you can just compare, you can see, you can do basic things here just to understand where your, uh, which queries are resulting to the performance bottleneck or what is the problem. So once you get inside the dashboard, you'd understand it better that it's not that difficult. You can just monitor, it's just easy to move around in the dashboard and you can just pinpoint and identify where your problem is. So yeah, awesome. that can help you. 
Cool. So it seems like really what we're trying to do is help developers, help people who might not be SQL experts, go from problem to some sort of solution or action that they can take to address whatever performance issues they're facing. Sounds awesome. Uh, I think we're ready. Like, can you tell us more about the performance dashboard, what it does, how it works? Sure. Um, okay. So first I'll explain regarding the most important features like CPU, like how do we show the query details, what kind of queries we have. Um, so first certain developers inside that, um, if you find that your, um, database is running slow and you just want to identify which are the queries, which have resulted. Uh, in your CPU to go this intensive, you would you might want to rewrite those queries so that it it is less CPU intensive and it is more efficient. So we help you in identifying those queries. We show you in the dashboard and help you pinpoint that if if the CPU was high at a specific period of time, you can go to that time interval and identify which queries have resulted into that. Similarly, we also show you high CPU queries, longest running queries, because you know every every person's requirement might be different. They might have a different way of uh, configuring their database. So we we give you all the options, and you can uh, use however you want. Just a small um, um, just a small briefing here. So this is the performance dashboard. When you open performance dashboard, it opens into the CPU tab, which shows the number, the CPU V cores versus time. And you can, you know, customize the time interval to whatever you want, like past 12 hours. And here you see that we see certain alerts. Like if some, uh, the CPU has been uh, running high for some time, we can go, we can drill down into a specific time interval and we can see that this time interval would reflect the queries which were responsible uh, for this high CPU consumption during this time interval. Again, this is retrospective. You can come back and do a forensic analysis as well. So when you get inside a query, you can see that, okay, this is the query which was responsible. Uh, you have the execution history, you have last executed, minimum duration, average duration. You can copy the query and open uh, that in the editor or VS Code or SSMS, whichever is fine. You can even compare the query performance uh, with two different time intervals just to give you an understanding how this query has been running uh, for now or for like, compared to uh, the last 30 days to the last hour. So that can help you identify where the problem is. And again, you can open this in the query editor. It would just copy. You got to paste it in the query editor and you can go ahead and you know, debug the query and try to rewrite the query if you think it can help. Similarly, um, we have multiple other queries which can help you in identifying if there's a problem with your database. Um, for example, here in this dashboard, we have the CPU consumption. But if we go, um, yeah, if we go below, we can go into view more queries where we have high CPU usage queries, longest running queries, most frequent queries, and high read queries. We uh, we arrange it in descending order. You can mark them as favorite if you want to. And again, toggle, like just uh, using the favorite toggle button, you can just have your favorite queries uh, so that you can check those. You can again view them by average or total uh, duration. And again, uh, the time interval is there so you can um, check which queries have been responsible for uh, your performance bottleneck in your database. So this can this can really help you in pinpointing the query, which you should go and check and try to understand what the problem is. Yeah, and that's how we're taking like some of the SQL expert things, like to look at those four different categories of queries and helping you and saying like, hey, you should check this out. So I, I love it. What What other things are we doing in the performance dashboard? Yeah. So we are not limited to this. We have some other tabs in the performance dashboard as well. Um, so just running through them, we have user connections, which uh, which basically gives you the number of users who are connected to your database. So at any point of the user connection suddenly shot up, you understand that there are multiple other people who are trying to connect to your database and fetch data. So you can take actions based on that. We have requests per second, which is basically the execution count of the queries. Uh, but again, the number of times your database or your table 
or your query has been called so this can help you identify which queries are really important and you might want to go ahead and optimize them the uh, fourth we have blocked queries again uh, we can see the block queries per second over a graph but we can't do a forensic analysis since we were having a current block query here we can see the session ids the blocking session id application name and different other details including the weight statistics to give you an idea about which queries are blocking anything else uh, we have allocated size which gives you an idea about what kind of size your tables are consuming if you want to reduce that uh, allocated size also gives alerts if it uh, shoots beyond 80 percent and the last we have automatic index which uh, which is uh, which is very similar to the automatic index we have in Azure SQL um, where um, automatic indexes are created on your databases and dropped based on the requirement of the databases. So um, the user created uh, indexes would not be impacted by uh, this algorithm. So it would. this is just to help you to help your database to function more smoothly and more efficiently. So this is the um, idea of having automatic indexes in Fabric SQL DB. So yeah, these are the main features that we currently have. But yeah, uh, who knows, you would want to have your feedback and incorporate more. Awesome. Yeah, feedback is definitely something I know the team is looking for since we are in public preview, but even beyond. Um, I think that kind of leads to my last question. Like, do you have any final tips or tricks or words of advice or requests for folks as they're getting started with this? Um, it's just easy. You start with it and you would face difficulties. You might face uh, challenges with it. We are here to listen to you. We are here to understand your use cases. We are documenting every feedback that you write in any of the channels. We You can write a feedback on the dashboard itself. There's a small uh, icon um, for feedback. You can submit your feedback there. We, are, we uh, monitor the feedback really well. You can write your feedback on any of the Fabric forums, um, uh, like the Idea Forum or anything, and you can also write in Reddit. We would respond. We would try to understand your use case better. We might reach out to you and try to understand and try to incorporate that in our roadmap if we have enough upvotes for the same. Uh, you can go to the documentation in the link. It would also be shared in the description. And uh, you can get started with it. You can try, you can uh, run your loads, and you can see how uh, the performance dashboard is functioning for you or your use case. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sabojit. I learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers also learned a lot as well. If you're watching this episode, go ahead, leave a comment and let us know what you're most excited about on the performance dashboard or what you would like to see most. And we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.